last week I found, bought, and built the new studio test bed using the Lian Lee T60B test bed. Now, I picked this up on a deal on the Facebook Marketplace for $40. And if you're interested, I'll put a link up to the card somewhere up here so you can check that video out. But today, today we'll be rounding out part two by putting all or installing all the components onto the test bed. And I'll go over each component as I install them on the rig. But today we're going to be adding some of the key components to the T60B test bed that's going to set us up for the part three benchmark grand finale. That's final in French, I think. But before we jump in, this video is served up courtesy of the subscribe button and notification bell. Be sure to hit them both on your way out. All right, so first, have, first we have the Intel LGA 1366 DX58SO X58 motherboard. We're going to be installing 16 gigabytes of Corsair uh, CMP 16 gigabytes speed, uh, 1600 megahertz, cast latency 10, 10, 10, 27, I believe. And we're going to put them in dual channel configuration, which just means two two memory sticks for both DIMMs. And, I mean, it looks good too, the aesthetics match. I don't know if the camera can really pick that up, but the aesthetics match the blue. But memory is installed. Now, let's get it installed onto the chassis. I want to drop that in there. If I have the necessary slide screws, now I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten up each one. Socket the other way, so actually tighten. This CPU motherboard combo will likely be upgraded. I likely say either with a high core count Ryzen 3000 CPU or a Z390 combo, a Z370 combo instead of X470 or X370. There's really no need to go X570. Or even X590, or any of the X's for that matter. You can even go B350. Make sure they're tight. Alright, motherboard installed to the chassis. Not that bad. Let's say. But, I mean, fun is just, fun just pretty much getting started. This here, EVGA 750 watt G380 plus gold rated power supply unit. Uh, this is actually brand new and see here, fly. That's what let's pop. Let's pop her open. Let's start here. Okay. Can I open the box? Alright. Uh, she's box open. Manual, which we're not not gonna need. I love how EVGA sends their power supplies in pouches. The more, I guess these are for excess cables, but it, look, the, the power supply comes in its own little fancy compartment suit too. So, I mean, that's, I love EVGA's package, and it's just, what, what good is this after once you take it out? You know? SATA, which we are going to need, obviously. We're not going with the M.2s, unfortunately, and I didn't want to get a PCIe M.2 as just at that point, again, this, this motherboard it won't be on the chassis for long. We're going to upgrade it. We're going to maybe go with something with high IPC, which Ryzen 3000 does now have. So, decisions, decisions. One of the reasons why going with a fully modular power supply has its bonuses and its perks is again, you have limited wires and limited cables to deal with as far as. Only, uh, only connecting components that you have to. I'm going to go ahead and install the hard drive. Of 
Corsair Master Liquid 240, 2L2, 2NL240L. Cooler Master Master Liquid 240 all in one water cooler. Now, I, I like Cooler Master's boxing. I too picked this up on a deal. It's brand new, as you can see, not even any dust particles. But this is going to go mounted likely down under, like there. And first, I gotta get the brackets on. The cooler is actually a little bit more intuitive. Try to, no, I only try to take out you know, what I'm going to use. In this case, this this cooler supports multiple different sockets: 1366, 115X, 775, LGA 2066, and 2011, and AM4, AM3, 2, 1 plus all the all the numbers. This is this now would be a good time to ask that if you're not already a subscriber to the channel. Go ahead and do me a, a solid favor. It helps the channel grow. I'm locking new features here on YouTube. Um, you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And what that does is that tells YouTube as a platform that, you know, hey, I really enjoy the content coming from this guy. He's not great, but he's okay, which I can live with that. I can live with not being great because, I mean, greatness takes time. Nobody's, nobody's born being great at anything. Unless you're like one of those other guys. There, I mean, it's just not me. Cooler Master graciously uh, it came with their own uh, master master gel. Today we're going to use the Noctua. I'm just going to apply a dose these wires later. At a later date. the pump mounted to the CPU socket. I'm going to go ahead and connect the much various task of the, of, of the controller. Okay, here we go. Right here. This CPU cooler has a lot of cable
Ryzen, the first gen release, and I had a Ryzen 5 1600X. That's now in my partner's Wonder Rig. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put the link up somewhere up here in the corner. That's now being used in her computer. Still dropping screws. I paired this card with that CPU as gaming in 4K, you're more you're more GPU bound. So the CPU doesn't really is or isn't really required to do most of the work anymore. It's all about pushing that resolution or pushing those pixels that the graphics card is now doing the majority of the work. This card won't fit. Alright so the Asus ROG 1080i wouldn't fit. Uh, just too long. But the AIO connected there. So instead, swapped it out for the Asus Strix RX 570. Nowhere near not as fast, but just as cool looking and fits with the fan there. No compromise and really shouldn't change a great deal of the benchmarks either. Alright, going to back and get her ready for power on the motherboard lights nice can we get a picture And there you have it. As you can see, we're booted into the desktop here. And I'm gonna run, do a quick Cinebench run. Let's see what the temperature spike up to. I mean, the test just about finished it up now, and we haven't even saw 6.0 yet. There you have it. So we topped out at 59C with a score of 479. That's it's not that's not nothing to hit home about, but then one more test here we're gonna fire up and then we'll save most of the bench benchmarking fun for uh, part three of this video. Here you can see we got a score of 1777 with an average FPS of 70.6. Everything is looking good, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna power this down. Go ahead and take care, do some cable management on the back of that test bed, and then we're gonna go ahead and wrap up and conclude this video and talk about what happens next. There you have it, Lab Rats. That'll be all for this one. Thanks for tuning in and watching part two of this test bed series. Now, uh, again, if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe now so you can uh, catch part three, which will deal with all the benchmarking goodness that will pair this i7-940 up against something just as uh, relevant in 2019. I'm going to go ahead and go. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, be easy.